In the 1970s and 80s, a possible answer for why near-death experiences occur came from an unexpected place. The United States Air Force had new aircraft, F-15s, F-16s, and those had high sustained acceleration or G-forces. We worked on ways to enhance their tolerance to acceleration so they could uh, gain an advantage position in, in combat. Air Force Major General James Winery was studying the effects of extreme G-forces by spinning pilots in a centrifuge. A centrifuge spins around, similar as to when you have an aircraft that makes very tight maneuvers getting from 1G to 9G in a little less than one second, which means if you weigh 200 pounds, in a little less than one second, you're going to weigh 1,800 pounds. Push it out, push it all the way up, all the way up. Under this kind of stress, the pilots blacked out when the G-forces prevented blood from reaching their brain. This result was no surprise. But then things got strange. Three, two, one, pressure. Some of the things that we were finding were seeing a bright light, seeing family and friends, familiar scenes, what would be considered out-of-body experiences, that they were above themselves, looking down at themselves. Winnery and his pilots were momentarily deprived of oxygen, but they were nowhere near death. The major impact of Winnery's experiment is that it strongly suggested near-death experiences weren't some sort of mystical phenomenon but the result of extreme stress on the brain. As the brain gets closer and closer to death, the brain starts to only fire in areas which are very, very basic to survival. Closer and closer to the brain stem. It's a very small and very fundamental and primitive part of the brain. So the visual cortex, the back part of the brain, or the superior colliculi, which is considered part of the brain stem, if they are activated, all you see is light. And so to see a, a light with a lot of darkness around it, our best interpretation is that's a tunnel. And we are attracted, because we are mammals, we are attracted to light.